Welcome back children. So far in this lesson we have talked about two things. One, what happens to a current carrying conductor if it is kept in an external magnetic field. And the other is what is the value of the magnetic field created by this conductor itself. These are the two things that we saw. Now we are going to combine both these ideas and see what happens when you have two current carrying conductors. Clearly, the magnetic field produced by one conductor, see each conductor will produce their own magnetic fields. Okay. If the magnetic field okay. the magnetic field produced by one conductor is going to act as the external magnetic field for the other conductor. So the current is already flowing in that conductor and the external magnetic field is present. So the conductor must experience a force. What would be the value of the force and what would be the direction of the force. We will answer these questions now. Let me take two long conductors. Conductor one is like this and then conductor two is like this. They are long, long conductors. I call this as one and I will call this as two. We continue. Let's say I1 is a current flowing through conductor 1. And I2, let me assume the same direction here. I2 is a current flowing through this conductor. So let me take this conductor 2. And let us see what happens to that conductor. Okay, there is a current flowing through this. And I1 is going to set a magnetic field around it. So this current I2 is flowing in the presence of the external magnetic field of I1. So that is going to experience a force. Okay, force experienced by a current carrying conductor is given by this expression. Right? I L cross B. So this we know. Okay, so now let's see. Let's see the magnetic field value. So it's a long conductor and let's suppose that D is the distance between them. D is the distance between them. So the magnetic field produced by I1 is this. I'll call this as B1. So B1 is present here. B1 is from I1. It's everywhere. And it has some value here. Okay? The values will be different as you go away from the current carrying conductor. But let's say that it has a value B1 at this point or along all the axis. Okay, so B1 is given by mu naught I1 by 2 pi d. We have already come across this. So what is the for? Let me take a specific limb. It's a long way I say. Let me just take this limb. Let us suppose, let us try to find out the force experienced by this length of the wire. Okay, this is the magnitude of the magnetic field produced by I1. So the force experienced by this length of the wire 2 is given by F2 is equal to ILB. So let's see the direction of B1. Okay, current, I'm going to use the 
right hand rule to do that. So I1 is a current flowing in this direction. So it's going to put the field into the board now. now on this side, it's going to put the field in, into the board. And on this side, we put the field outside. Doesn't matter. Now it's going to put the field inside. So B1 is going into the board. Into the board. So this is the direction. So you can see this. I2 is in this direction and B1 is in this direction. So IL cross B would give me the force in this direction. So F2 is equal to ILB in 90 degrees. So there is no sine theta component here because I is in this direction. B is perpendicular to that direction. So F2 will be ILB. So I in this case is I2. Now I am taking a length L and B1 is what I should be using here. So that's going to give me I2 L mu naught I1 by 2 pi d and if I rearrange the terms then I get mu naught L into I1 to I2 divided by 2 pi d. That is a force experienced by conductor 2. Okay. This is the magnitude of the force experienced by this conductor. And which direction would that force be? Well, I2 is in this direction, B1 is in this direction. So I2 cross B should give me this direction. So this conductor will experience a force in this direction. So this is going to be F2. It's a magnitude and this would be with the direction. Okay, so if that this is the case, then clearly we can talk about what happens to I1. What happens to I1 is pretty much the same. Well, I2 is a current flowing in this direction and that would set up a field around it and I1 is a conductor kept in the field produced by I2. So this must also experience a force. I am going to calculate the force now experienced by I1. Okay. So for that I need to know B2. So B2, again I2 is a current flowing through it. In this, if I use the right hand rule, in this direction I2 will go in, but on this side it will be coming out. Because if you curl your fingers around the direction of the current, then this is how it's going to look like. So it will go into this and then it will come out like that. So here B2 is going to act, yeah it's going to act everywhere. But uh, I am talking about the value along this line. So B2 and that is coming out. The direction of that will be out of the board. Okay. So what's B2? So B2 can be given by mu naught. B2 is produced by I2. So mu naught I2 divided by 2 pi and the distance is say d. Okay? So now the current, the force experienced by I1. So F1 is equal to I1 and here also I am going to take the same length L. Notice that all the other lengths also will experience force. So the total force on this conductor would be the sum of all the forces. But I am just taking a certain length of this conductor and trying to figure out 
what the force on that particular length will be because of this and if we were to find the total force acting on the entire length on the whole conductor then i have to add all these else together but as of now i'm going to find the force experienced by a certain length l so this is i1 and l and now the feet is set up by i2 so it's b2 so mu not i2 by 2 pi d so if i rearrange the terms f1 is going to be equal to mu not l i1 i2 divided by 2 pi d so this would be the force experienced by the first current carrying wire over a length l note that f1 and f2 have the same magnitude but what about their direction f2 direction is towards my left but what about f1 direction okay i1 is up and b2 this way i1 is up b2 is out to the board when you are on the other side of this conductor i no carrying current i2 so b2 is like that so b2 is this way and i1 is this way and if i do a cross product i1 cross b will point me in this direction so i know that f1 will act in this direction so notice that both f1 and f2 have the same magnitude but the directions are opposite so that is newton's third law in action every action has an equal and opposite reaction and they act on two different bodies f1 and f2 have the same magnitude but f2 is in this direction f1 is in this direction so if i pull something in this direction and that is going to pull me in that direction if i push something in that direction and that is going to push me in this direction so the directions are different so newton's law is also obeyed here so this conductor with the current i2 exerts a force f1 on this conductor and this conductor the current i1 exerts a force f2 on this conductor and both the forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction hope you understand this from this you can find out that if you have two conductors carrying currents and if the currents are in the same direction then the conductors are going to be attracted towards each other so f2 is in this direction f1 is in this direction so these two conductors will be attracted the conductor current carrying conductors will be attracted when the current direction is the same in both of them suppose the current direction is different in one of them okay S suppose i2 sorry i2 is in this direction i2 is in this direction now let's see what's going to happen the magnitudes will remain the same let's see what will happen okay so i2 is in this direction going down but what about b1 
B1, current I1 is in this direction, so B1 is still into the board, into the board. So this is fine, so I have cross here. So B1 is in this direction, but I, I2 is in this direction. Now I2 cross B, I2L cross B will give me this direction, which means that now the force will be in this direction. And I'll draw it here, sir. F2 is in this direction. Previously it was in this direction. Now you reverse the direction of the current, then F2 is in the opposite direction. So what will happen to F1? Let's see what happens to F1. Okay, I1 is upwards, but what about B2? Now, in this case, I2 is going down, I2 is going down, and I'm going to use a, the right hand rule now. If I2 is going down, I'm going to grab this with my right hand, with, with my thumb pointing towards the direction of the current, and you see it's like this. It's going to, my fingers curl around it in this fashion, which means that B2 is going in. So B2 is also in. So B2 is going in, I1 is in this direction, B2 is going in, I1 cross B2 is going to give me this direction. F1, F1. So F2 is in the direction and F1 is in this direction. F1 and F2, the magnitudes are not going to change. They both will have the same magnitude. But now the direction has changed. For F2, this is the direction. For F1, that's the direction. So they're going to push each other out. In the previous case, they were pulling each other. Now you change the current direction in one of the wires then the wires start pushing each other out. Again, Newton's law is obeyed. The magnitudes are the same and they are opposite in direction. The forces are opposite in direction. So you can conclude that if you have two current carrying wires with currents flowing in opposite directions, then those wires will be pushing each other apart. If they are having currents flowing in the same direction, then the conductors will be pulled together. They will attract each other. But if the current directions are different, now they will push each other out. They will repel each other. Hope you get this idea. Now, uh, this can be used to define an ampere theoretically. Let's see how to do that. Okay, we said this is a force experienced by length L of a, a wire. So, let me do it this way. I keep one wire which is pretty long, a very long wire. Okay. I'll keep this long and now I let me just reduce this, the size of this to that. Okay, so this is length L of the second wire. Now what is the force experienced by this wire? There are no other lengths. So the total force experienced by this would be just the force experienced by this length only. All the other lengths were already removed. Okay, so let's then F2 is the total force experienced by this. Let's see what happens, uh, what would be the value of this force when one ampere current flows through this long wire. When one ampere current flows through this long wire, 
the force would be F2 is equal to mu naught is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 and length let's say it's just 1 meter right so it becomes 1 okay and I2 is also let's say it is 1 uh, one ampere so 1 ampere here 1 ampere here then this is also 1 it's going to be 2 pi into d then suppose that they are separated by a distance d uh, uh, 1 meter so that gives you okay, that gives you 1 here so you cancel here get 2 so you get f2 is equal to 2 to the power 10 minus 7 Newton so many Newtons so what you know now is if 1 ampere flows through this conductor and 1 ampere flows through the other conductor then the force experienced by each of them would be 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 Newton per meter so per meter this will experience 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 Newton so you have one more meter here and that will be twice that one more meter and be thrice that so an ampere is defined this way an ampere is the amount of current that is flowing through two long wires separated by a meter and will produce a force which is equal to 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 Newton per meter for every meter of the wire it will produce a value of 2.2 10 to the power 7 minus 7 Newton so this is how you define ampere and coulomb now could be defined in terms of ampere so now coulomb one coulomb charge would be equal to 1 ampere second so the moment you define an ampere then you are able to define coulomb 2 hope this is clear to Ok, uh, now let's look at uh, example problem uh, 4.10 Let me read the problem first and uh, we'll do it The horizontal component of the earth's magnetic field at a certain place is 3 into 10 to the power minus 5 tesla and the direction of the field is from the geographic south to geographic north a very long straight conductor is carrying a steady current of 1 ampere. What is the force per unit length on it when it is placed on a table horizontally? A. East to west and B. South to north. Okay. There is something that I need to tell you. The direction of the field, the Earth's magnetic field, is from the geographic south to geographic north. So why is it so? The geographic south is actually the magnetic north pole, and the geographic north is the magnetic south pole. So that's very clear because when you have a board magnet and when you hang it. Uh, from a thread then uh, it's going to align itself to the earth's magnetic field the north of the board magnet will be pointing towards the geographic north but north will be attracted only to south right opposite poles attract 
magnet. So if the baud magnet nod is pointing towards the north direction, then that is actually the magnetic south pole. And the south is pointing to the magnetic north pole. So the geographic north pole is magnetic south pole and the geographic south pole is the magnetic north pole. So you have to know that first. Okay? Okay, now, now there is a very long straight conductor and that is carrying a current, steady current of 1 ampere, just 1 ampere. 1 ampere current is flowing through it and it is kept on a table horizontally in the first case in the east to west direction, which means if this is east and if this is west, this is north and this is south, east to west direction. Let me, let me draw it here. Okay. Um, yeah. This is north actually and this is south. This is direction we say. Okay, this is east and this will be west. But as I said, the geographic north, the directional north is actually the magnetic south. Magnetic south. And the geographic south is actually the magnetic north. Okay. So, the magnetic field will be from north to south, so it will be in this direction. It will be in this direction. It won't be from north, the geographic north to south. It will be from the magnetic north to magnetic south. So, the direction of B is like this. Okay, and, uh, and the current is flowing from east to west. So from here, this is the direction of the current, I. So then I cross B, how does it in this direction? Okay, so in this case, if this is east, this is west, the current is flowing in this direction. That is north and this is south. So east to west, it's a current direction. So magnetic field direction is like this. So, I cross B will give me this direction. So, the current carrying conductor will experience a force in the downward direction. Okay? So, what would be the magnitude of the force? So, F is equal to I L B. So, I is 1 ampere. And then L is again the unit length is what you are going to find. So per meter, what is the force on it? So that is 1 again. So B in this case is 3 into 10 to the power minus 5 Tesla. So effectively that gives you 3 into 10 to the power minus 5 Newton. But when we defined the ampere, what did we say? So there are two current carrying conductors which are separated by a distance of one meter. And both of them have one uh, ampere current flowing through them. Then the conductors will experience a force of two into ten to the power minus seven newton per meter. Right? So the force for one ampere, force for one ampere. With two parallel wires carrying currents of one ampere each, will be in this, right? It's so called 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 Newton per meter. But then you have one conductor with one ampere flowing through it, and you're keeping it in the Earth's magnetic field, then it experiences a force of 3 into 10 to the power minus 5 Newton per meter of its length. So notice that it's 
150 times more than the force experience if you have had two parallel current carrying wires. So when you calculate, it, it's way higher, 150 times more. So Earth's magnetic field is powerful in that respect. Okay. So when you're trying to calculate the value of ampere, you you have to take into account the effect of the Earth's magnetic field on the conductors. You need to account for that. Only then can you measure the value of current properly. You cannot just do the experiment here and then say, you know, like I got 2.2 power minus 7 Newton, so that's the value of the current. But that could be affected by the Earth's magnetic field because magnetic field is present, the Earth's magnetic field is present. So whenever we do the experiments to determine the value of current by looking at the magnetic field it produces and looking at uh, the amount of force the other conductors experience, then you have to take into account the Earth's magnetic field. The effect of it is not negligible. It's substantial. Hope you understand this part. Let's come to the second part. When you are keeping the wire in the south to north direction. I said this is my north, this is my south, it's my east and this is the west. I was keeping the wire this way. Now I keep it this way. Then my eye is in the same direction as the B. So the cross product of that would be zero. So this will not experience any force at all. This wire will not experience any force due to the Earth's magnetic field because the current now is parallel to the Earth's magnetic field direction. So the answer to the B part of the question is zero. B is I L cross B is equal to I L B sine theta but theta is zero in the cell. Okay? And some vector here. Right? Okay. Then f is equal to zero. So in the second part, if I keep the same conductor, the same current, in this direction, it will not experience any force at all. So the direction is very important. When you calculate the force experienced by the conductors. And the direction is very important for calculating the magnetic field too. If you remember, I told you in the previous videos that if this is a current carrying conductor, it will produce a magnetic field around itself. But the magnetic field along the direction of the current, and at this wire along the, this, this, this length, that would be zero. If it's a straight conductor, the magnetic field uh, at all these points along this line will be zero. You can have a magnetic field only around the conductor at all other points, but not at those points which lie in the direction of the current. Hope this is clear to you.